Well, good afternoon or good midday, perhaps. It's 11.59 according to my clock here. Um, so we'll start here in just a moment. Trust the Lord's giving you a good day today. Hope nobody got washed away with all the, the heavy rains last night. Uh, we were a little bit surprised this morning. I was on my way into the church, and here in Pickerington, all of the all the parks were flooded. Uh, Sycamore Park and Victory Park looked like uh, Lake Pickerington, and I thought about going and getting a fishing pole and, and trying my luck for some trout, but uh, I'm not sure uh, how that would work out. But uh, anyway, it's good to be here this afternoon, and we're looking forward to a wonderful, wonderful day. And I trust that God is, is giving each and every one of you the grace and help that you need, encouraging your hearts in the Lord. Uh, but uh, it's good to see you, Brother brother Yost, in Huntington, West Virginia. Uh, glad you could join us. And if you're, if you're able to join us, go ahead and, and put in the comment there. That way we can see and, uh, who you are and, and uh, just, just to be a blessing to you today. But let's, we're going to go ahead and pray together here this afternoon. And ask God to, to, to minister grace to our hearts as we study His Word together here for just a few minutes today. Heavenly Father, we thank You for Your love and care for us. Uh, Lord, we're thankful for all that You uh, are and all that You do for us each and every day. And Lord, we trust You uh, in the midst of all of this turmoil and strife. And God, we ask that You'd help us today as we look here into Your Word, that You'd speak to our hearts and give us the encouragement that we need. Uh, to continue through uh, this time in which we live. Father, which is perhaps the greatest moment that Christians have ever had uh, to live for you. So we pray that you'd strengthen our hearts, we ask, and it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. We'll go ahead and turn in your Bibles to, uh, to the book of 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter number 5, as we come to God's Word here this, this afternoon. Uh, we find uh, some very encouraging thoughts Maybe uh, you're like many others, worried about many things today. You know, we, and as if, I, if I've said it once, I've probably said it a thousand times that, you know, we never expected things to be like this. Uh, a week ago, we, you know, we were all laughing and joking about the quarantine and, and the, the, the need to stay home, and, and perhaps, you know, rightly so in, in some instances, but it's a reality. Uh, we look around today and you know, you, you watch the news headlines, it seems as if the government is, is asking stores to close and, and businesses are, are, are laying off their, their employees, uh, waiting for the storm to pass. And, but I want to encourage you today to be of good cheer because the Lord is faithful and we can trust in Him. And as we live our lives, it is imperative that we, that we trust the Lord. Uh, and who else can we place our confidence in? Remember, as we look back to a few days ago, to, to trust in man uh, is a curse, but we are to trust in the Lord in the day of evil. When we come to, to 1 Peter chapter 5, and we're going to begin in verse number one, verse number 1. We'll make a few uh, comments, but the real heart of uh, the devotional today uh, begins really in the midst of, in the middle of verse number 5. But notice what the Bible says, beginning in 1 Peter chapter 1, I'm sorry, 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 1. The elders uh, which are among you I exhort, who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint but willingly, not for filthy lucre but of a ready mind, neither as being lords over God's heritage but an ensample to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, he shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. So we find the Lord just exhorting pastors to do their job. And, uh, you know, leading up to this time, I think the majority of pastors want to be CEOs sitting behind a desk, not really being the pastors that God has called them to be. To be a pastor means to, to oversee and to look after uh, the sheep. I, I heard I once heard somebody say, that a good shepherd always smells like the sheep. And because he's out, he's among them, he's, he's making sure they're taken care of. But the Bible says in verse 5 of 1 Peter chapter 5, Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. And then notice, yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility, for God resisteth the proud, and giveth grace to the humble. We need grace today, do we not? 
Uh, we need God's grace. We need God's strength. There's a, there's a couple of definitions that we could give the word uh, that we could give to the word grace. Um, the first off, the first and perhaps the most essential definition we we would give is that concerning salvation, uh, which is God giving us what we don't deserve. Of course, uh, what we do deserve is death and hell because of our sins. But God loved us. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, to to come to earth, to bleed and die on the cross, to pay the price for our sins, to be buried and rise again victoriously over the grave, uh, and offering salvation to whosoever will call upon him. And the Bible says in Ephesians 2, 8, 9, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. However, we come to verse 5, and we, we see that God gives grace to the humble. Well, what is this other grace that we that we speak of? Well, grace is simply this: it's it's the God, our God given ability to do right. And in the day in which we live, we simply as need to do right as God's people. We need to live right, to be right, to be that right example uh, to the world around us. Uh, there are, there are people everywhere that are just so utterly distraught with the circumstances of life, uh, with, uh, with the possibility of going without food or going without necessities uh, that we have taken for granted for so, so long. We need God's grace, not just to do right, but to maintain a right heart attitude before the Lord. And I want my life to be an example for Christ. I want my Lord uh, to, to truly uh, be pleased with, with my life and I, and I need God's grace to live for him and to be right and to maintain a right relationship with the Lord. So the Bible says, uh, God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Then he makes a statement in verse 6 of 1 Peter chapter 5. Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Remember, even James tells us that God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. And then notice in verse 7, and if you've never marked verse 7 in your Bible, would you go ahead and mark verse 7? Uh, verse 7 is where we ought to focus today. The Bible says, Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Christian, God cares for you. He cares so deeply for you that he paves a way for you to have your needs met. In Hebrews, we're told that we can come boldly before the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. In, in Hebrews chapter 4, in verse number 15, it says, For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. You know what that means? that Christ was tempted in all points like as we are, that means that he had the same cares. We, have a, we don't have a Savior that is beyond us. We have a Savior that condescended to man, that lived robed in humanity, that, that was tired, that was hungry, who slept, who wept. We have a God, we have a Savior that has been touched by the feeling of our infirmities. Christ knows the, the, the deepest emotions of your heart, the deepest cares of your life. The Lord is very acquainted with them. Therefore, he bids us, in verse 16, he says, Let us, therefore, because Christ knows what we are going through, because he loves us, because he cares for us, he says, Let us, therefore, come boldly under the throne of grace. Don't come before him timidly. Come boldly. Lord, you've given us this opportunity. You've given us this privilege. You don't have to pray through any man because there's one mediator between God and man. And that's the man Christ Jesus. And where it, say, and where it says, let us therefore come boldly under the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy. We need mercy. God, in wrath, remember mercy. And find grace to help in time of need. Because as we look back in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8, we find that our adversary is real. We're, said, we're told as saying, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. 
And the devil's trying to thwart God's plan, not only in this world, but in your life. He's trying to drive a wedge between you and the Lord. He wants you to think that God doesn't care, that God doesn't see you, that God that God is so far disconnected from you that he's beyond you and, and you're just you just have to suffer through this life on your own. That's not how God works. God cares. God loves you. He says, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. And the word of God says in verse 9 of chapter 5 in 1 Peter, whom resist, speaking of the devil, resist the devil, draw nigh to God, he will draw nigh to you, resist the devil, he will flee. Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. It rains on the just and on the unjust. But notice in verse 10, But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, this is something that we like to not think about so much. The next statement in verse 10, After that ye have suffered a while. Sometimes life is difficult. Sometimes life is, is abundantly hard. It's very burdensome. But understand, it's only for a season. It's only for a while. It doesn't last forever. Aren't you thankful for that? This COVID-19 thing that we're in the midst of, it's only going to last a while. It may hurt our bank accounts. It may hurt the different things concerning our lives. But understand, it's only for a while. After that, you have suffered for a while. Notice what it says there in verse number 10. Make you perfect. Establish, strengthen, settle you. What does is, what is all of this do for us? What does casting our cares upon the Lord do for us? Well, it strengthens our faith and dependence upon God. It makes us perfect, complete. Establish, it establishes the convictions in our heart. We become strengthened in our inner man, in, in our faith, we, we become settled. We've got it all. It's You know, I settled this a long time ago that I could trust the Lord. Maybe God's bringing us through this time in our lives so that we will settle it once for all. But you know what? I can Not only can I count on the Lord for salvation and, my, and, and eternity, but I can count on God today. I've settled it. And as a matter of fact, I'm casting all my care upon him. Christian, will you cast all your care upon the Lord and allow who God is to make the difference in your life today? If there's ever a time where we need to trust the Lord, now is that time. Christian, in the midst of all the worry and all the panic and all the frustration, be of good courage. The Lord's overcome the world. And greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Give it to the Lord. Allow God to take care of it. You know, sometimes the temptation is to take our burdens to the Lord. And, you know, we, we leave it at the cross. You know, we, we surrender it to God. And say, we come to the Lord and pray, say, God, I give this burden to you. And we pray and we make some great uh, some great prayer to God. And then as soon as we say amen, we pick that burden up, we, we heft it over our shoulder, and we carry it through the rest of our day. That's not how God wants it. He says, hey, come to me. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you learn of me. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He says, hey, let me trade you. Trade burdens. Let the Lord give you his easy burden. You give him your heavy burden and there's nothing too hard for God. Let God handle it. Let the Lord encourage your heart. Let God give you the grace you need today. Cast your care upon him. You know, have faith in God. 
The Bible says the soul that is lifted up is not upright in him. But the just shall live by faith. Don't trust in man. Don't, don't find your confidence in the government uh, or, or in your neighbor or in your fellow Christian for that matter. Just trust the Lord and do your very best to leave your cares with Jesus. May I pray with you? Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your word. God, thank you so much for uh, the benefit of knowing that you're in control and that you care. And Father, we pray one for another. I know that there are many people overwhelmed. Uh, Father, we pray that you give peace, that you would assure folks of, of their security in Christ. Lord, if you be for us, who can be against us? Lord David said that he'd been young and that he'd been old and he, that he'd never seen the righteous forsaken or a seed begging for bread. And certainly, Father, our hearts are full of worry and care, but we cast our care upon you, knowing full well that you care for us. So, Father, give us encouragement today. Give us courage. Give us peace. Give us help. Give us strength. Lord, accomplish your work in our hearts and lives. But Lord, we rejoice in you today. We pray that you'd help us be a blessing to others. And, and Lord, that you would meet the needs that we have. And Father, we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for joining with us today. And may God bless you. We've been praying for you. Trust that God would, would continue to, to meet your needs. And of course, if there's ever anything that you need, call the church. Reach out to me directly. And uh, our, our email is info, I-N-F-O, at PickeringtonBaptistTemple.org. That's our church email. I check that regularly. If you need something, if you know someone who needs something, let, let us know. We'll do our very best by God's grace uh, to help meet that need. But let's trust the Lord. Let's be a blessing to others. Look forward to seeing you on Sunday, Sunday morning, YouTube and Facebook at 1045. I'm praying for you. Lord bless you. Bye-bye.